own show, so I'm gonna give you an audition. Smile, keep the energy up. Susie, take one. Hey, I'm Susie, and you know what? Cut. All right, Susie, that was good, good energy. I wanna do it again. Okay. It's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> Don't let drought get you down. I've got some tips on how to wrangle those raindrops. Plus, some perky plants that are made to beat the heat. And I'll show you a yard that'll rock your world. If you live in an area that has ever experienced a drought, you know how tough it can be to get water to your plants. Cities often limit watering to one or two days a week, which can be a kiss of death for some plants. But the lack of water the folks in Rio Rancho, New Mexico experience isn't because of a drought. It's because they're in the middle of the desert. They receive about nine to 10 inches of rain per year. Master gardener Linda Poe and her friends have learned how to make every drop of that rain count by using xeriscaping techniques. That means using drought tolerant plants, harvesting water wherever possible, and using efficient irrigation practices. So, Linda, this is what you had to start with? This is it. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> this is some pretty unforgiving stuff. Not a lot of organic matter in there. No. So you took this and you add organic matter in the form of compost and transform it into something that will support? We put nothing in the soil. We don't add amendments to anything because if we did, we'd be creating potted plants. Gotcha. They would never leave that, right, right. <laughs> that home. The roots would just stay right, right there. So we dig a hole, we put the plant in, and then we mulch it and water it, and they, they take off. How far down before you hit? Caliche? Yeah. <laughs> It depends. Some people get it like a foot in their yard. Sometimes you can go down maybe six feet. So sometimes people will plant a tree and in a couple of years they notice it's really declining and it's the caliche. Caliches are hardened calcium carbonate deposits that generally form when minerals are leached from the upper layer of soil. They then accumulate in the next layer, which is typically three to ten feet below the surface. An impermeable layer of caliche can keep plants from draining properly, which can take away a plant's essential oxygen supply. So you have to take the jackhammer and... Crunch it up. Ooh. Ouch. That's yeah. tough gardening. Yeah, it's rough out here. I don't think I've ever tried to garden in anything like that. But it's amazing. Look how happy the chemises are. Yeah, well, like you said, it does have a high mineral content, but that doesn't do you a whole lot of good if the roots can't absorb the, the right. minerals. And our rain, we, 9 to 10 inches a year. And wow. it usually comes in, you know, twice a year, maybe two or three rains. So this area that you're looking at right here will be flooded. It'll be amazing how much water fills up all these arroyos. Really? Yeah, in less than an hour or two. One way Linda harnesses the little rain she gets is through dry creek beds. They're functional, and they don't look half bad either. It comes from the west over there and just swishes through this garden. So we decided to put some creek beds kind of meandering through the garden and help slow the water down. Well, these are nice. Not only are they functional, but they're decorative. Yeah. So even when water isn't flowing through them, I, mean, I have these scattered about my place just because I use them to divert water. Um, but they're, they're nice to look at. Linda uses a native river rock to achieve a more natural look. To ensure that the rocks don't disappear into the soil, the rocks are placed on top of ground paper. So when the rains are really coming on, this is it's just... It's great. It looks like a creek. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's nice. And the master gardeners built a little bridge and the water goes under it. I like the bridge. It's stable, too. It works. <laughs> you won't drown. <laughs> but when the rain just doesn't fall, it's time to look into other options. A bubbler or drip irrigation system fits right into a xeriscaped area. These systems deliver water directly to the base of the plant. This reduces moisture loss from evaporation and wastes less water than other methods. They're good for the environment and your bank account. These can give out like two to eight gallons of water per hour. And so we can adjust them with this little screw. And, and how often do you run that? In the spring, we start out running them about um, 20 minutes, three times a week to get the ground wet. And then we start cutting back. And we'll run it about once a week for about 20 minutes. A deep soak. Mm -hmm. Are those catch basins there just? Yes. 
Those are catchment. Those actually catch water. We did do a little culvert between them, but they do catch a lot of water, and then it does help run through. I haven't seen it run over yet, so I'm waiting because it's brand new, but we're excited for a big rain. If you're interested in incorporating xeriscaping into your landscape, but aren't quite ready to give up on grass, fear not. So even in a water-wise garden, you can have turf grass, especially when it's something that's as drought tolerant as buffalo grass. Yes, it does real well. We mow it maybe three times a summer, and we let it get four to six inches high. Another key component to a water-wise landscape, mulch. It helps keep the soil surface cool and hinders water evaporation. We put about three, four inches thick and it breaks down the soil. If you get down under there, that soil looks good. So we really like it. And then you've got, I saw some pecan shells. We use pecan shells a lot. And then there's the, the, the rock mulches as well, which are more typical mm -hmm. of xeric landscapes. Yes. Um, but I like those too. And they too can be used anywhere. Exactly, and a lot of homeowners use this gravel. And we just left it to show that the plants are happy growing in it. We just put a drip on it and they're happy as long as they've got water. Linda's plants are sure to get just enough to drink, but not so much that they'll drown in this water-wise wonderland. You don't have to live in the desert to appreciate saving water. Xeriscaping can save you money, too. And thanks to the other nifty xeriscaping techniques we learned today, we can each do a little to help preserve tomorrow. Coming up, plants that'll save you time and money because they like it dry and sunny. Plus, a low-maintenance landscape that'll keep you rocking. Cockroaches can carry 33 infectious diseases. Get to them before they get to you. With the ultimate protection guarantee only from Terminex. Call or click today to protect your home. Terminex, power over pests. Mayflower movers are easy to spot. They're the ones that always go the extra mile to protect what's precious, even on their days off. That's why we've been protecting your belongings since 1927. Mayflower, we were made to move. Now get cash back when you use CityPoint and move with Mayflower. Go to Mayflower.com for more information. Day in, day out. Your employees give everything they've got. And because your company wouldn't be your company without them, you provide Unum Benefits. Unum Benefits help protect your employees should the unexpected happen. Because you want to be there for them. Just like they are for you. Unum. Better benefits at work. down to the final four families in the hunt for a quarter of a million dollars. We have a ton of work to do. The right choices become crucial. But will David Bromstead's test of color confidence be the breaking point for one team? You guys are adults. This right. looks like a little kid's car. It's the good, the bad, the bedroom showdown on HGTV's $250,000 challenge. Every family wins. One family wins big. An all-new episode tonight at 10, 9 central on HGTV. Meet David Salmon of Santa Fe, New Mexico. David specializes in breeding and growing his own drought-tolerant, cold-hardy plants for the water-wise gardener. These plants grow well with little, if any, supplemental water and can tolerate extreme weather conditions, hot or cold. He's agreed to show us around his xeriscapes and greenhouses to get an up-close peek at some of his water-wise creations. So let's say we start from the ground up. I don't think I've ever seen this before. What is it? This is Veronica Heavenly Blue. 
the common name is uh, ground cover speedwell and it's a, a very vigorous uh, hybrid variety that I developed and we use it basically to carpet our xeriscapes to help cover the gravel, cool it down, and add a lot of color. If you look closely, this little piece of heaven actually has tulips and lavender growing within it. This adds a lot of diversity and gives the area a nice splash of color. It's great, and it's actually growing on top of this gravel mulch. Well, a lot of these xeric ground covers, they love the gravel mulch because gravel mulch is a, an excellent uh, water harvesting mechanism. You heard correctly. The gravel mulch works great in terms of soaking in and harvesting rainfall so that the ground covers grow quite well. In an area with a dry climate like Santa Fe, it's no wonder the desert gardener seeks out plants like this that can beat the heat. So you're big on the ice plants? Yeah, they've really come to be a staple in the Xeric Garden. This particular variety is, is known as uh, Lesotho Pink, and uh, the thing I like about it is that it is evergreen, so it has a nice year-round presence and in another couple of weeks it will just explode with uh, clear pink flowers. Not only is this baby a year-round presence with seasonal blooms, it's also cold hardy and will grow just about anywhere with good drainage. Now that we've covered that, let's head to the greenhouse to check out some more of David's cool creations. Okay David, this columbine is, uh, boy, it's just jumping right out at me. Tell me about this. That one is affectionately known as swallowtail. It is a native plant from central Arizona, and it's noteworthy not only for the size of the flower, but these uh, enormously long spurs. They're just gorgeous. It blooms for many, many months, so it gives you a lot of color over a long time. Speaking of color, I'm totally salivating over this salvia. This is one lady in red I'd really love to take home. Uh, wait, that came out funny, but you know what I mean. This uh, hybrid is particularly valuable because it blooms for so long. It basically starts up in early to late June and then just keeps going till frost. Cold hardiness on this? I believe it's good to about zone seven. Cool. That means this plant can adapt to a number of different climates. And if you're not sure which zone you're in, just click on hgtv.com slash zone. We have to keep pushing, folks. So many plants, too little time. Paul, this is a flower I thought you might be interested in since it has its roots in Oklahoma. This is Scutellaria violet cloud. Scutellaria. Scutellaria. I like that. <laughs> and it is beautiful. It's a fabulous color. I, I'm a real color fanatic, and when I see something this vivid pop up in my hybridizing efforts, I get excited. By taking the Scutellaria resinosa, which is native to Oklahoma, and crossing it with a Scutellaria suffraticens, which is native to Texas, he's come up with one amazing hybrid. Well, it's funny because Oklahomans and Texas don't often get along all that well. <laughs> no, they don't, but, but uh, here we have harmony. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, one thing we can all agree on, this baby is welcome to scoot its way into any home. And what have you got here? Well, this is another one of my favorite hummingbird plants. This is a Jalchinaria, or hummingbird trumpet. And this is a western native plant. This particular variety is known as orange carpet because it has a very low ground cover habit. I wish I could show you all of David's plants, folks, but we're running out of time. Well, okay, maybe a couple of more. Well, this is a nice collection here, David. What have you got here? Well, all kinds of little goodies. This is a bicolor variety known as uh, just peachy. Just peachy. Just Look, peachy. Two distinct colors. Now, does this change to this? It goes from orange to pink. How peachy indeed. And don't forget this one. And this is shades of orange. And again, you can see the gradation in color as the uh, buds open and age. David, you really opened my eyes um, in a lot of respects today, in particular with regard to the look of a Zurich landscape. You proved to me that they can be gorgeous. I mean, I mean and, and have uh -huh. this vast diversity of plants, much more so than I ever imagined. Well, I think that's one of the unfortunate misconceptions about water-wise landscaping is that somehow there's a, just a few plants that will work, but really the world has a lot of uh, arid climates and so we can borrow both from our native plant palette and from areas in other parts of the world that are dry and really come up with quite a selection. Next, we'll roll out the rocks for an easy and drought-tolerant landscape. And I'll tell you what time it's wise to water.
This summer, USA is treating you oh. to TV's hottest new doctor. You're cute. A modern day medical Robin Hood. As long as no tights are involved. Mark Feuerstein is a combination of McDreamy and MacGyver. I need a bottle of vodka, a big pen, and some duct tape. Who's sure to heat up the summer? Quite a thing we just pulled off. Who needs hospitals after all? <laughs> Don't miss the show TV Guide is calling Pitch Perfect and a winner. Awesome. Royal Pains, a new USA original series. All new episodes Thursdays at 10 on USA Network. Characters welcome. There are rocks that can amaze you. And rocks that can inspire your imagination. Rocks that can touch your heart, soothe your senses, or just help you appreciate the simple things. Yes, a rock can do a lot of things, but only this rock has the strength and stability you need now to help you plan for a rock-solid retirement. Prudential. Everybody's talking. Everybody's talking. Everybody's talking. Walk right in, sit right down, baby, let your hair hang down. Walk right in, sit right down. Relax, you're at Great Clips. Is your summer endless? Is it filled with lasting color and inspiration? You could travel the globe to find it or discover it in your own backyard with the Endless Summer Collection. Remarkable hydrangeas that bloom all summer long. Unique plants, unique blooms. Voila, unique garden. You don't need crazy gardening superpowers or an endless amount of time. All you need is endless summer. Look for the blue pots at a garden center near you. You'll love the things a free $50 cash card can buy. So cash in on summer with Quality or any of these choice hotels. Earn a free $50 cash card when you stay three separate times. Book now at choicehotels.com or 800 for choice Yeah, this is a great deal. And Every company get a free upgrade to a Route 44. And the way the economy is right now, I tell you, one of the best places to invest is in beverages. Well, I'm getting 120% of what I would be getting for the same cost. Uh -huh. My on. ROI is just is right through the roof. You know, I, the return on investment can't be beat. That's yeah, fantastic. I'm not sure what that is, but I can tell you my raspberry orange intake is spot on. Free Route 44 upgrade at Sonic. Order your favorite combo and get a free Route 44 upgrade, no extra charge. All combos included. And try your everyday value menu. All this for a buck each. Anxious about quitting cold turkey? Make that first step easier with the Nicoderm CQ patch. Nicoderm steps you down from nicotine gradually, doubling your chance for success. Nicoderm CQ, three steps, 10 weeks, and you're free. When was the last time you saw a yard that rocked your world? And by that, I mean the use of rock throughout the landscape was so natural yet artistic that you were simply amazed. Design-wise, rocks add many things to a yard, like interest, flair, texture, and lots of character. Rocks are accents, or can be accents. Using a dry cobble stream can create a flow through your yard. Boulders are like sculptures, so really nice rocks are really nice sculptures. They're focal points in the landscape. Roberta Walker of Roberta Walker Landscape Design has another use for rocks in her Northern California yard. She uses them instead of grass to cut down on her use of water. If B words come to mind like bleak, bland, or boring, have a look. This setting is more like bold, brilliant, and beautiful. When I'm doing a drought tolerant landscape and I'm going without grass, we have to have some way to delineate the areas and create flow. Rocks are the perfect medium. One more B word to add to those rocking reasons for rock? Blissful. Rocks are the way you make a landscape exciting. I love that it's full of color, full of texture, it's a habitat, and best of all, when it's 100 degrees and my neighbors are mowing, I'm not. Take a look at Roberta's yard. Perennial borders outline the edges, which gives the setting dimension and color, while the middle consists of maintenance-free pea gravel and a smattering of drought-tolerant plants. This yard, especially the area where the pea gravel is, looks sort of like a leaf shape. They're all different types of leaves, and especially with the path going through it. I love to play and I love to bring art into the garden, and this is a way to do it without purchasing sculpture. To start with, I'm just going to use my foot to mark out an area in the pea gravel. Just gently move the pea gravel to create a flow of how I'm going to lay the bricks. 
And just as a leaf is an important part of a plant, Roberta is about to make a leaf shape an important part of her front yard. The flagstone pathway is sort of the midriff or the central vein of the leaf, and right now she's sketching the veins that branch off the midriff. No two leaves are alike, so there are no hard and fast rules about how Roberta forms her lines. She likes them curvy because she feels that gives a nice flow, but the cool thing is, is if she hates the bend, they're easy to mend. Once the lines are etched into the pea gravel, Roberta will fill them in with bricks. Well, bricks come in many colors, so it's important to tie the brick in with the house, with the landscape. For me to have chosen a bright red brick just would not have worked. So I want to keep things toned down. I'm doing an artsy project, and so the brick, I want it clear and toned, but not bright and flashy. Okay, so I'm going to continue to clear the pea gravel and then set my brick down. Roberta lays the brick end to end along the scooped out line. She's not worried about the bends between the bricks leaving gaps. On a wider view, they'll blend in seamlessly. Okay, there's the last brick for this section. Scientific sophisticates will of course recognize this is a reticulate vein to leap. I'm going to take the pea gravel out of this side and I'm going to replace it with the dark lava rock. I want to create a contrast here so it'll go from dark to light, dark to light. Another great thing about using smaller sized rock in the landscape, it's not all that expensive when compared to big structural boulders. In Roberta's yard, gray is the new green when you consider the pea gravel has reduced the amount of water she uses. Plus, the rock she's scooping up right now will be reused on another project in the backyard. Around the base of the plants and irrigation equipment, Roberta uses extra care in scooping up the rock. So what's replacing all this pea gravel? I'm guessing it's just a stone's throw away. Well, I've chosen black lava rock. This rock would be considered one inch to one and three quarter. I chose this because of its dark color as a contrast. There are many different colors you can choose. There's white rock, red rock, pea gravel, different sizes. But this is easier to manage, and it gave me the color that I needed. Here's a plus. Lava rock is porous, so it's lighter than other kinds of rock. But hey, you still got to shovel it one wheelbarrow full at a time. Now, if she wanted, Roberta could put down another layer of landscape fabric to keep the weeds down. But because she hasn't found much evidence of new plants peeking through the old stuff, she'll bypass that step. So this will take about seven more wheelbarrows, and then we'll spread it into the edges, and then go to the next section. The layer of pea gravel she removed was two to three inches thick. That's about how much lava rock Roberta will put in each section of the leaf. Now I'm going to spread the rock. I'm going to use the shovel in my hand to, to spread it into the corners here. I'm going to gently move the rock around the base of the plant so the plant has room. And also, the rock is going to cover the drip lines. Look at this, isn't it great? We have the contrast between the dark and the light. It's just what I'd hoped for. Let's give Roberta some help installing the rest of the lava rock. This is an inexpensive project. When you're dealing with rock, especially rock by the yard, the cost is very low, maybe $28 a yard, and I use two and a half yards of rock here. And then the brick also. So it's an easy, inexpensive project. So here's the stone cold truth about using rock in the landscape. It saves water, it mimics nature, it's colorful, it's artsy, it can be inexpensive, and hey, it looks pretty darn good. By having a drought tolerant landscape, you're doing something different. It's not an ordinary yard. And yet, we could add this rock and brick and we can make it an extraordinary yard. Coming up, the one thing that'll give you the most bang for your buck in a water-wise landscape. HGTV's House Hunters International takes you to your top five fantasy locations. See which homes they'll pick. This is our backyard. In the amazing places you picked. So is this a cool spot or what? House Hunters International Fantasy Location Countdown begins tomorrow night at 10 on HGTV. Whatever the inspiration, bring it home with new soft soap ensembles. Keep the pump. Just switch the base. New soft soap ensembles. Affordable style for every sink. I'm active. 
for endurance. I'm active for strength. I'm active for date night. I'm active for me. EA Sports Active, a personalized workout program for the week. Get inspired, get motivated, and get active. Great to for everyone. I'm no different from my customers. I'm worried about the economy just like everyone else, and I think about how often I have to fill up my car. Saturn's been making fuel-efficient vehicles from day one, and we've offered hybrids for years now, and they're some of the most affordable on the road. People want a car they're going to love to drive that's also affordable to drive. This just didn't occur to us when it became trendy. It's just how we do business. At Saturn, we get it. That's why we're offering 0% APR for 60 months on most 09 vehicles. Who says losing weight has to cost you a lot of money? With SlimFast, you've got one of the best values in weight loss plans right at your fingertips. Register at SlimFastPlan.com for free, personalized tools that help you get started and stay motivated. Like free daily meal plans, free advice from registered dietitians, and more. Plus, the average cost per SlimFast meal is about a buck. That's a great value. And it's about to get even better. Because right now, when you register with SlimFast online, you can get coupons for up to $20 off. And SlimFast helps control hunger for up to four hours. So you've got the power, the tools, and the savings you need to kick some cravings without breaking your budget. Register at SlimFastPlan.com and get coupons for up to $20 off a month's supply. SlimFast. Power up. Slim down. Brunch. It's breakfast and lunch, a combination that saves you money. Here's another, Hamato. It's home and auto. People who switch both to Allstate saved an average of $503 a year. <laughs> Tasty. Waterwise gardening or xeriscaping isn't just for folks who live in dry, arid climates. And waterwise or xeric plants aren't just for those folks either. The truth is we all need to be waterwise, no matter where we live and no matter what we grow. The use of mulch is perhaps the most water-wise thing you can do. Mulch helps retain soil moisture, it stabilizes soil temperatures, and it keeps weeds in check. It also makes the soil more hospitable to all the critters who call the soil home. And all that adds up to healthier plants and a healthier environment. Oh, and as a bonus, mulch looks great. The routine inspection of garden hoses, faucets, and other watering gizmos is another important consideration. After all, even one small drip from a faucet can waste hundreds, maybe even thousands of gallons of water a month. So make repairs when necessary. Very often, the solution is little more than a 10-cent washer. Collecting rainwater has become extremely popular, and kits that include barrels and all the necessary hoses and fittings are available from a variety of catalog and online sources. Knowing when and how to water is a topic I've addressed many, many times before, but it's such an important one then I'm gonna briefly recap the most important points. Ideally, you should water in the morning when water pressure is usually highest and winds are calm. Deep soak each time you water, but watch for wasteful runoff. And water only when necessary. If you have an automatic irrigation system, I suggest you switch it to manual mode and fire it up maybe once a week and let it run for 20, maybe 30 minutes, rather than have it run every day or every other day for only five minutes or so, as many people do and use drip irrigation whenever and wherever possible. It's by far the most efficient way to water. A lot of you are already growing water-wise plants whether you realize it or not. Ornamental grasses, for example, are hugely popular throughout the United States and they require very little water. The same is true of a number of other commonly grown plants such as Coreopsis, Gellardia or blanket flower, daylilies, penstemons, culinary herbs such as rosemary and thyme, just to name a few. But without a doubt, the most water-wise plants of all, and the ones most commonly associated with xeriscaping, are the cacti and succulents, and I love growing them. For one thing, they remind me of the beauty of the desert, but more than that, I'm fascinated by their myriad shapes, sizes, and colors. Of course, most of these babies aren't hardy in my area, but they overwinter just fine as house plants and I only water them about once a month. To learn more about water-wise gardening or water-wise plants, click on hgtv.com slash gardeningbytheyard. 
And now, if you'll excuse me, all this talk about water-wise gardening has made me really, really thirsty.